Hey traders, what's happening? Jamie Setley here and it is the last day of July. Uh, July 31st, 2020. Day is over, week is over, month is over, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and before I jump into this most important chart here, let me know that you can hear me and that you can see, please. Test, 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 test. Can you hear me, see me? This is a test. You guys hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know that you can hear me. I need an answer before I get started. Would like an answer. All right, seems to be working. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to start with this is a chart from last night. Um, if you remember this US dollar chart, it's such a great index to follow. I mean, it's the four most liquid currencies, right? Uh, Euro, pound, yen, and Aussie, just against the US dollar. It's very simple index, simple is elegant. Um, and again, it, it, it just paints a very simple picture of dollar strength and weakness trend, et cetera, levels, all that good stuff. So um, we had RSI, at, I think it was 16.53, okay? And that was the only th the third time that we'd had a reading that low. Look at the other two. Pretty good time to be bullish the dollar, no? Um, so this says nothing of the future. It just says where we were, right? And where we were was at a point in which momentum based on the RSI indicator was so low um, that you know, the probability of a snapback rally or reversal attempt was there. Now we got the reversal attempt and here's what's cool about this. So that center line is the exact low from today, right? If we look back kind of on where, you know, parallels within this structure, where they are, this is the 50 or, or sorry, the 25 line. And this is a line just below, which crosses off some pivots here. So, you know, what would be awesome is if we actually ended up getting a rally back to the underside of this old line here into these parallels, you know, which would take, say, you know, three to six weeks or so. Um, that would just be, that would be ideal, right? In fact, if you got up to the former fourth wave here, 12382 would be perfect. So, you know, that's kind of in the back of my mind. Um, all I still really care about though at this point is the fact that we found just perfect, perfect resistance, or sorry, support on this level, okay? Ideally, it'd be great to try to time some uh, some trades within this with some parallels, right? So center line up here might be some resistance, say early next week. Maybe the 75 line is going to be some support down here somewhere. <clears throat> Keep an eye on that level right there, 12008, right? <clears throat> but yeah, it, at this point, this is the most confidence I have in there being some sort of a tradable low for the dollar broadly, okay? All right, so let's move to the Euro. Um, just a beaut 
Here was the chart that we looked at most recently. And this is the channel back to the 2008 high. Spiked above it just today and reversed. That is a beautiful reversal, right? Absolutely perfect. Um, if I look at some, you know, volume here, by the way, on futures, guess what we got? So, hold on to these. Euro futures, you can see down here, I've got this little pink line uh, or number here. Okay, so the volume, that's volume, today's volume. You can see that that's the highest volume since 610. It was actually the last time you had a high um, in Euro. And I'm gonna put this at 1.46 because the volume today was 47% above the 20 day average, which again is 1.47. So what we have, you can see the red dots <coughs> or red bars. Excuse me for a second, hold on. Oh, excuse me, I had to cough. All right, I know I do not have coronavirus. Um, this was a red bar here today. Last red bar was here, 6.5, um, right on a high. One prior to that was actually the high from 2018. One prior to that was actually the high from 2014. Not bad. One before that was actually the high here in 2008. Um, and yeah, you can see here, those are all pretty good signals, right? So trend line combo along with um, the re big reversal, uh, pretty promising. So if we want to go say really short term on this or shorter term, I should say, you know how much I love these volume levels. Oh, by the way, you have a perfect Elliott channel. Okay. Um, I think I'm make a note of that for Sunday's update. Okay, Elliott channel and a, and a channel extension. So the high volume level from today is 118.25. That's gonna be level for resistance. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you real quick. Let's do, let's go to a shorter term chart here. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about with this. All right, let's get rid of these. So let's go to say, let's go to a four hour chart. That's always a good time frame, I think, to look at. So what you're going to do here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, this is wave one, wave two, three, four, five, okay? Now, in order to properly channel in an Elliott manner, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line off of waves, the bottom of waves two and four, okay? And then you are going to make a parallel and extend it off the top of wave three, okay? Now this is important if it's on log scale, like I have here, which a lot of my charts are log scale. It really doesn't matter a whole ton in this one because it's a shorter term chart. Um, so you can just make a parallel and extend it. You can see how that works, right? So that's pretty good. Here's another thing. And this is that I talk about channel extensions a lot. You can just do this with the pitchfork on modified shift. What you're gonna do is draw just a regular channel to make sure that is modified shift, not shift. Extend it. And then, there you go. So that's a half channel extension. You can see where it goes from here, all right? It's a distance from the center line to the upper parallel up to here. So it's pretty close to high as well. Um, the big thing that you're going to want to watch here is probably down on this line here around 1560 or so. Okay. That's going to be your first level, but the biggest thing you want to know, or that you want to, I should say, um, you know, keep in mind is essentially that you have, you know, hit the upper channel line for Elliott and that we're probably in for a much bigger reversal to the downside in a three wave correction at minimum to correct this five wave advance. All right, so 
throughout the month of August, that's going to offer some really good downside, I believe, in euro upside in the dollar generally. Okay. Um, pound, let's go to pound. Pound's a little different for me. Um, you know, look, if I'm, we're going to have a reversal today on the pound. Let's take a look at some of the reversals that we do get in British pounds on, on based on volume. So you can see that today, yesterday 1.3, today 1.5, let's put in, Don't think the range is actually big enough for that. Let's see here. So we have a two day reversal in British pounds. That means that we had a high volume up yesterday and a high volume down today. And you can see prior signals on that on both sides. You actually had a really good buy back here in October. That was obviously Brexit. Um, good signal here, no, good signal there, good signal there, okay signal there if you waited it out. But just for me, um, great signal there. For me, I actually, it's tough, uh, British pound looks pretty good to me on a relative basis, a lot of things. Like we looked at like pound Aussie yesterday, looked pretty good, right? Um, if I look at say, just pull up a, a British pound chart here, with some of my markings, you know, this is not, this is not a bad chart. I mean, if the dollar is in for a bigger, you know, uh, pop, if you will, it's going to be difficult for the British pound to really hold, but I think there are a lot better places to be, you know, uh, long the dollar rather than the pound. You know, the first level you're going to want to pay attention to is obviously the center line. And that's like 130, okay? Um, and that was resistance here in April and here in June. But 130 is a level. Um, you know, if you get below there, maybe you come back to the 50 yard line or, or the 25 line, excuse me. But yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I, probably not willing to take much of a stance on the pound either way on this. I will say too, you've got this line off the 2018 and 2019 highs. Um, and obviously 32 is just huge. And we didn't quite get there today, but we were pretty close. I mean, high is 131.70 right there, right? I don't know. I think there's better places to be. We have been kind of right on the pound. Uh, I got out way too early, but we've been constructive the pound generally, and that's proved to be the right thing anyway. All right, let's go to the Aussie. Um, and then, yeah, we'll do commodity currencies. Then yen, yen was huge today, by the way. All right, so big move today off of the channel line. It's incredible how great these levels are, right? Look at that. Not bad. Not as much volume as, you, as you'd think today. And it was above average, but it was nothing to write home about. It's like 1.26. Let's just see what that looks like on my reversal indicators, okay? All right, Bear actually did have some pretty good ones here. So who knows? There, 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 right? There, no good. I mean, you've had some pretty good bearish signals here. Wow, I mean, look at these, these are great. All right, so maybe it's better than I thought. What's also interesting with Aussie, by the way, let's just go to an hourly chart here. 
so remember we talked about the channel back here from the June 15th low. I mean, it's just perfect, right? <clears throat> so, you know, I would think resist. So we, we talked about Euro high volume level today. Um, today's, uh, the one from today for Aussie is 71.73. That's gonna be resistance. Um, possible bounce level near 71.15. Bigger bounce level probably near 70.20 or so. But again, given where we are um, at this major long-term channel line, I do think that you come back potentially all the way back towards 67.50 or so, um, which is the 75 line, but that's kind of my first broad level to look towards. Also, where are the seasonals? Hold on. We do have, um, and I, I, you know, I talked about this two weeks ago. It's very early on this, but we are still in a very bearish seasonal uh, time of year for the Australian dollar. And in fact, August, August is the most, by far, the most bearish month of the year for the Australian dollar, especially recent over the last five, ten, and fifteen years. Okay. So it all lines up really well. So yeah, love Aussie short side again, 7170 is going to be resistance, I think, at this point. Let's check out uh, Kiwi. Kiwi, you still have that channel here. It's a four-hour chart. We've broken... Kind of this short term level here, right? So let me get rid of that. I think it's ugly. And for Kiwi, I've got um, I've got resistance for the from the high volume level today is going to be right here at 6660. Okay. And that's also where the 200 hour average is. So I like that. That's interesting. And really, this um, this channel right here, you can see the old highs right here, right? At 65.85, we'll call it. So this is another great example of um, if, if you do break the channel of where you'd look towards um, to see, you know, to get a, a bigger uh, correction, okay? And where that is are going to be your channel extension levels. So... You know, if we put a three, which is on trading view, okay, this is going to be a full channel extension. It's very easy, right? Just you can visualize it. Like if you take the distance from here to here, that was not accurate at all. From here to here, right? It's the same as from here to here. That's a channel extension. And when you trade in a channel within this manner where the upper was resistance, right? It's just, we've been with this the whole time and you break it, that's the natural place for the market to go. All right. It is interesting how it works so well. Maybe a little lower than that, I don't know. I do think this is the right one to follow. Based in part on how the market reacted around the center line as well, okay. Anyway. A break of 65.85 really um, would be bearish for eventually a move probably down towards that channel, that extension level, okay? In the interim though, 66.60 should be your resistance. Okay, dollar CAD. This is one um, that, on here. That's weird. Spiking at the end of the day. We got a nice trigger, by the way, on this um, today, 33.85 on the long side. So that's exciting. But what we have here is essentially trying to uh, 
you know, testing channel resistance, testing channel resistance, and eventually maybe breaking out of it. And oh, by the way, exact same thing here with Kiwi in terms of channel extension, right? Not hard to see that if you broke out through this, the channel extension area is going to line up with these old lows. And that's going to be in your 38.50, 39.20. That's a nice move, right? We're talking, you know, five big figures. So uh, on dollar CAD, granted CAD pips, but whatever, it's still a heck of a move to get. And this is one that really, uh, this is more of a textbook one than say Kiwi because the low, you can see it was support and resistance, right? With Kiwi, the lower parallel has yet to actually provide support, okay? All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at Japanese yen because today was a big move in the yen. All right. Hell of a move today. Okay. So a few things. I'm going to go four hour on this bad boy. A few things. One, the lower parallel was not quite support on spot. It's going to be different on futures, by the way, and you'll see that in a second. However, the drop from up here in March is almost exactly two equal legs, okay? Um, that's at 104.12, and guess what today's low is? It's 104.19. I would say that counts, okay? Let's say that counts. Now, this move has taken us all the way back to 106.16, which is actually a level that we were looking for resistance. at some point a couple of days ago come off here a little bit what's happened with this volume move today so check this out all right we're going to go japanese yen futures we have Okay, you can see that's two. That's two times volume in a 20 day average. Let's see how many reversal we've had at that. So look for the red bars. How many times have we had a reversal with 2x volume? Bullish one there, no good. Bearish one there, I say that was pretty good. October 2011, I do remember that. Um, here, no good. All the way back here in 2004. My point being is we've had like three of this magnitude and one of them ended up being like the biggest high of all time uh, for yen, which would be a dollar yen low. Um, something else I wanna show you so here's the futures chart as well. The drop in futures, the rally, and again, this is in, I know it's confusing. This is the inverse of just Japanese yen, um, dollar yen, excuse me. So you had a 618 retrace exactly, okay, exactly. You also had exact channel, corrective channel, okay. Uh, point being is that this is a really solid, you know, turn from a very, very important level. I would be looking, you know, for a turn or for a for a a long dollar yen position, short uh, Japanese yen position uh, from you know here on out. And something that I do want to, you know, show you in terms of how we might be able to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to throw a VWAP from this level, from last night's high, which was 2,200 hours at 7.30, July 30th. Okay. So that is going to be right there early next week, 95.05 in yen. So if we're looking at dollar yen, what that essentially means, it's probably about 105.30 is where you'd be kind of thinking. Okay, and you can see that the rally 
unfolding is clearly an impulse, right? Maybe one more poke on the upside next week, pull back from that center line right here at about 106.15, and then look to buy that pullback, okay? So yeah, very exciting um, reversal, very exciting Friday action heading into um, a new month. Okay, let's also take a look at some commodity stuff. So if you recall, copper has been one that I think has been very important. Um, and here's what people are forgetting is that copper actually topped out three weeks ago. Um, you know, and it's maybe it's been, maybe it's the leader here. I don't know. But for whatever reason, copper topped out three weeks ago at a major resistance level. Look at those weekly candles, <clears throat> right? And then if we go to the short term picture, we are essentially on massive support here. So if you break this level, um, that, you know, opens the floodgates for guess what? We're talking another channel extension, lo and behold. Probably takes you down towards, say, 263 or so, right? Be a pretty big drop for, for, uh, for copper. So I, you know, very interested in this chart, especially considering it seems to be kind of leading a bit with, again, the top out being three weeks ago, right? What I say, when I'm talking about leading, I mean, like, it topped around three weeks ago, but the Australian dollar has top, topped out today, right? Um, and just if we want to kind of look at that a little bit, and compare the Aussie with our friend, Dr. Copper, okay. <clears throat> so this time Copper topped first. That was funny because look, back here at the last big one in January, Copper uh, topped later, Aussie. The point is, is it's just a non-confirmation, divergence, whatever, okay. Um, it's a fractured market, as I like to say. So anyway, I do like that. It's a good setup or good, say good information, we'll call it. Silver and gold, frankly, I, you know, these things are just going through the stratosphere. We had some pretty interesting action, obviously, this week in silver. Um, you know, it is a huge level. This is from a chart earlier in the week. And I did say that, you know, it, I'd be looking for a top up there, right? The 38.2. So far, we've topped there, um, but it hasn't done a whole lot. We've also got, if you go back to Tuesday, Wednesday's updates, there we've got a ton of VWAP stuff going on as well. Um, you know, the long-term VWAPs. So yeah, there's that. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have, you know, trading off this level is one thing, but I don't have, you know, much of a, a view on a trade here, I guess, just at this point. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, looking at gold, let's actually go to, I'm looking at spot here. Here's a weekly chart. This is actually the fork from the 2015 low. Um, this is the 75 line that we've hit. Perhaps we get a pause and pull back into back towards the center line. That would be the real setup here, by the way. Um, you know, you get, 75 line pullback, come back towards that area of kind of former congestion. That would be ideal, right? It's kind of over here, 1790 to 1820. That would be ideal for a bigger move, um, you know, to reset, if you will, for a move back towards or up towards a 2200. Very interesting possibility there. That would also bring you back, by the way, into close to the 50, 
uh, the 50 uh, day average at some point if it happened relatively quickly. Okay, so that's it for me. Um, you know, currencies and metals here for me. I'm, I, I have no interest in looking at these indices at the moment. Um, they're, to me, they're kind of a mess. Um, I don't have much of a feel for it right now. And, you know, they're being driven by several large stocks and you're seeing, you know, offset uh, from weakness in other places, but I just don't have much of a, much of a desire to focus on those things at which I don't understand at the moment. And I love the, the reversal of currencies today. I love, you know, some of the levels and metals like here, which are worth monitoring. But um, yeah, my big thing hey, next week is that big dollar reversal we had today. Very exciting. Okay. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up. I will archive it. Um, if it. If it archives quickly here, depending on the technology, I will have it up today. Uh, otherwise, it will be like tomorrow. But um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and I will talk to you later. All right, bye.